Hello everybody and welcome back to Unit 4, Matter and Energy. Today, we'll be talking about energy. You guys will be able to identify the different types of energies and you'll be able to demonstrate the conservation of energy in a reaction. So energy is just the ability of anything to do work and some of the different forms of energies that we see out there are chemical energy which is the energy that is being released or absorbed as a result of a chemical reaction we can have electrical energy which is the energy that is created as a result of the movement of electrons between uh, different shells we can have electromagnetic energy which is the energy due to um, waves such as uh, the uh, gamma radiations ultraviolet the visible right uh, radio waves x-rays um, all that stuff. We can have heat or thermal energy, which is the energy that is uh, generated as a result of the movement of atoms or molecules uh, when temperature is uh, uh, applied or changed. We can have mechanical energy, which is the energy of anything in motion. We can have nuclear energy, which is this is the type of energy that we studied in the previous chapter. Um, and this is released as a result of a fission reaction or a fusion reaction. So remember, fission reaction is when you have um, a heavier nuclei and it splits into two lighter nuclei. And then fusion reaction is when we have two lighter nuclei and they unite to form a heavier nuclei. So both of those processes release a lot of energy, which is the nuclear energy. And then the last two types of energy um, that we see most commonly are the kinetic and potential energy. So kinetic energy is the energy of movement and then potential energy is the stored up energy in anything. So there's a law for energy that's called the law of conservation of energy and what this law says is that energy is always converted from one form into another form but it's never lost. We can never uh, create a new t form of energy um, or destroy any previous form of energy um, it's just converted from one form to the other form for example let's say you are trying to light up a match okay so you are trying to generate that chemical reaction um, and at that point it has a lot of chemical energy and then eventually once the uh, match is lit uh, now that chemical energy will be converted into thermal energy or heat Another example of that law is the kinetic and potential energy. So potential energy, remember, is the energy that is stored up in anything. Uh, we are not so when we are when I'm just sitting here not doing anything, I have a lot of potential energy, a lot of my energy is stored. But when I get up, um, I start to walk or like do some activity, uh, then that potential energy will start converting into kinetic energy. So for example. For both of these uh, examples, for both of these pictures that you see on the slide, um, you see that when um, these two people are just standing there that they are not doing anything, all of their energy is stored as potential energy. But once they start moving or once there is some action going on, that potential energy is converting into the kinetic energy. Because kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So for the rest of this chapter, um, one of the one specific type of energy that we'll be focusing on is heat energy or thermal energy and one of the most important topics um, for that type of energy um, is temperature so uh, let's get started on that today um, so when we talk about temperature what is temperature temperature is basically the average kinetic energy of any substance remember kin kinetic energy is the energy of motion or energy of movement so when you look at this picture here you guys see um three different um pictures i would say uh, so in this first picture this is the temperature and then look at the particle motion okay the temperature is low particles are moving but they are moving at um, a slower rate as we keep increasing the temperature so in the second picture we have increased the temperature 
And what has happened to the particle motion? The particle motion has also increased. Then we move on to this third picture. Once again, we have increased the temperature and the particle motion has also significantly increased. So the takeaway from these three different pictures is that when we have lower temperature, we have the particles are moving slowly. So we have a lower kinetic energy. And when we have a higher temperature, the particles are now moving faster. So we have a higher kinetic energy. That's exactly why we say that temperature can be defined as average kinetic energy. The faster the particles are moving, the higher the temperature. The slower the particles are moving, the lower the temperature. So out of the three states of matter that we discussed, solids, liquids, and gases, solids move, their particles move very slowly because they do not have a lot of room to move. So the maximum that they can do is they can vibrate on their own position, but they cannot go from one place to the other, which is why they have the lowest kinetic energies because their particles are not moving a lot. So they also have lowest temperatures. Gases, on the other hand, have a lot of room to move. Their particles move all the time. Um, so they have the highest kinetic energy and that's why they can also have the highest temperatures. Okay, so that was it for this part of this chapter and I will see you guys next time.